Hey, yo. Me to Angelo, but I call her Yee. Hey. Uh, yes, new Mano. Hey. New Mano. You're the only person I know with, with their own song. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Plies, for making yeah. that song for me. That was a gift right before the show started. Nice. He, he just sent me a file, and I was like, what's this? Nice. It's a full song, too. It's a well, full it's longer song. than that? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I got to hear that. It's a full song. Um, but anyway, all everybody keeps talking about is this ice cream truck downstairs. I know. Today. Everyone know. keeps being like, you know there's an ice cream truck Should downstairs. I start my diet now? Like... It's Today's what, Thursday? A detox fast. Should I start today or should I like get the ice cream and then start after that? How do- I feel like this is going to be an ongoing cycle. If no. you do that, it's going to just No, but what I'm on. saying, do I start Monday fresh you or know do what? I start today? We're going to talk about it. Okay, cool. Okay. All right. In the meantime, it is, um, what's today's date? The 7th, March 7th. Uh, Taylor Rooks and Joy Taylor, their podcast dropped yesterday, their first episode of Two Personal. They'll be joining us today. And right now, let's shine a light. 800-292-5150. Let's spread some love. Shine a light on them. It's way up. I'm a shine. I'm a shine. Turn your lights on, y'all. Turn your lights on. Spreading love to those who are doing greatness. Shine a light on them. Shine a light on them. It's time to shine a light on them. It's way up. Mano's in the building. New Mano. Yes, I am. And it's time to shine. Look at you drinking your water. Drinking my water. All right. Well, let's shine a light on 29-year-old Cole Brower. She's the first American woman to race nonstop around the world by herself. This is a 30,000-mile journey. You know how long that took? 130 days. Wow. Yes. And so it's a, she said it's a very cool and so overwhelming in every sense of the word. She's only five foot two, by the mm. way. And she placed second out of 16 sailors who competed in the global solo challenge. She's the only woman and the youngest competitor in the event. And she hopes that young girls in and out of the sport can draw inspiration from that. More than half of the competitors dropped out. One person uh, struck something that caused his boat to flood. Another had to abandon his ship really? after a mast broke and a severe storm was moving in. There's a lot of danger navigating getting through the three capes of Africa, Australia, South America, uh, uh, winds, sharp rises in the ocean floor, frigid waters, stray icebergs. So they the do fact this that, alone. Yeah, alone, solo. So shout out to 29-year-old Cole 130 Brower. days. Yep. Now, who do you want to shine a light on? 800-292-5150. Erica, how are you? Oh, I'm great. I'm so, I'm so glad I was able to get through. Me too. Who do you want to shine a light on, Erica? Uh, my wonderful man, um, David Schultz. He's um, really intelligent. He's an aerospace engineer, Ooh. and really like, yeah, he's he's a he's a nerd. I, <laughs> I love know, I love a nerd. Uh, okay, go ahead. <laughs> um, but yeah, he's definitely like the best partner like a girl could like dream of. Okay, how did y'all meet? We met online. Oh, see, that is quite possible. Yeah, she has a very, like, strong emotional intelligence, and it's really surprising. She's just so mature. All right, that's cute. I love I love that for you. Uh, thank you so much. All right, thanks for calling, Erica. Thank you. Well, that was Shine a Light, 800-292-5150, in case you couldn't get through. And when we come back, let's talk boxing and Yee Devin Haney versus Ryan Garcia, and Mike Tyson versus Jake Paul. We'll discuss. It's way up. They say it's truth in the room. Ah! From industry shade to all the gossip. Out, send out. Angela's spilling that yee Talk to him. It's way up. I'm Angela Yee and Mano's here. New Mano. Yeah. He's dancing now, but yeah. that detox starts soon. You ain't going to have the energy. All right, let's get into some yee Uh And by the way, shout out to Viola Davis. In honor of Women's History Month and the 65th anniversary of Barbie, Mattel is honoring Viola Davis with her own Barbie doll, which looks super cute. I posted it on my stories in case you didn't have a chance uh, to see it. And she said, honestly, I wanted this Barbie to make little six-year-old Viola squeal. It's my biggest gift to her, my lifelong mission and legacy to make her feel pretty, seen, and worthy. No words, just joy. Mm. All right, now let's get into the meat of the UT. Ryan Garcia versus Devin Haney. Now, Ryan Garcia is saying that he does still plan to fight Devin Haney, but there were some concerning things. I mean, he uh, did this interview on Spaces and... He talked with Andrew Tate and he also posted on social media. It's funny to people. I was raped as a two year old and I have proof and they laugh. WTF is wrong with people. I'm sorry. My tweets aren't written properly. I'm being heavily attacked. The files of UFOs are coming out for a reason. They are slowly releasing it. So you are brainwashed. 
And he goes on and on and on. And this here's is Ryan Garcia. Yeah, Ryan Garcia. Um, and here's what he had said on Twitter Spaces. Bohemian Grove is real. They f- tied me down and they made me f- watch, dog. They're raping little kids. You know the higher elite. You know the path you're going down is dangerous, my friend. I don't give a f- They can't touch me. I'm a god. Because I care about you a lot, and I can assure you from my own personal experience that they can touch you, which is bro, the worst No, they can't, it. bro. All right, so come touch me. What? Yeah, I mean, it was wild when that happened. And his dad had said that his son was just trolling his followers. Devin Haney said the fight is happening April 20th. He's just playing crazy to sell it, which is weird. Well, now Ryan Garcia said he's back on social media and only focused on fighting. And he's not going to be speaking or tweeting or writing anything other than his fight boxing and sports here's what he had to say here to announce my return back to instagram over these past couple days you guys have seen some pretty intense things i'm not going to speak on any other topic other than boxing sports and my fight i'm training for this fight i want everybody to know this fight's still on 420 five weeks of super focus so i thank you guys for the support and i'll see you guys on 420 Mm. All right. Well, Aiden Ross, um, the streamer, he had some things to say about Ryan Garcia's mental health because a lot of people are concerned, like, what's going on? And here's what he said. I could hear in his voice, he might be having a little bit of a breakdown. Now, people got mad at him for saying that because they're saying that Aiden Ross knows exactly what uh, Ryan Garcia is talking about. And now he's with the elites and things like that. Mm. You know, I don't know what's really going on here. That's the thing. But he just went crazy overnight. And listen, boxing is a tough sport on your brain, on mm. anything could happen. So who knows what's really going on? He had a, a bad loss that people were trolling him about previously. And so I don't know. But Shakur Stevenson said he would step up and replace Ryan Garcia against Haney if necessary. That He volunteered uh, to do that. Oh, yeah? He, put he said sub- that? Yeah, he said on, on Twitter or X, sub me in, coach. And then he said, prayer is up, little bruh. So mm. that was his response. And meanwhile in boxing, Jake Paul is going to be fighting Mike Tyson. Unbelievable. Nah, you didn't think it was real? It has to be fake. Well, this that's is- going to be happening July 20th on Netflix. Wow. I wonder how much they're getting paid for that. A lot. I'm quite sure it's going to be a lot. And so according to the co-founder of who did this deal... Uh, he said Jake Paul versus Mike Tyson is a once in a lifetime dream matchup and I anticipate it will be the most watched boxing event in modern boxing history. You think a lot of people are going to tune in, yes, to watch that? Absolutely. Mike Tyson is 58, uh Jake Paul is 27 years old. Mm. Mike Tyson still looks like he's in good shape though when he you is. see him training. He is in good shape, but fighting is I don't know. And Mike Tyson said we signed the contract. And Jake Paul said, promotion, promotion, promotion. If I'm being honest, it don't need that. The biggest fight of the 21st century in the biggest NFL stadium in the U.S. broadcast live. And so I felt like that would be something that we would go and see. We are absolutely going to watch it. This is going to be in Arlington, Texas at the AT&T Stadium. We're definitely going to watch it. Yeah, we're definitely going to watch it. It's on Netflix. So we're definitely going to be watching. Who do you thing. think is going to win? I mean, I'm going to go with Brooklyn, but I mean, this is, I mean, Tyson is pretty, pretty old now at this point. He's like 30 years older than him. That's what makes it a, a, a little tough, you know. But I'm going with Brooklyn, man. We got Tyson to. Tyson right? forever. We got to. It's, it's, it's hard not to. That's right. Because whether, Mike. but who do you think is going to win for real? Now, who are you going with? Mike. Okay. All right. There you have it. You want to bet? You want to bet? Let you me wanna, see what you, you gonna, got on you, today. You're going to bet against you Mike. we the same thing. Are you going to bet? Are you going to bet against Mike? Give me a moment to think about it. That's, All right. That's blasphemy. And that is your ET. When we come back, we have about last night. That's where we discuss what we did last night, what went down. You know what I was doing? What's Watching that? Love Is Blind. We're going to be talking about that all morning. All right, it's way up. Yeah. Last night. So about last night. Last night. Last night. Here's how it went down. All right, it's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee. And New, New Mano, Mano yeah. is in the building. What'd you do last night, Mano? Got out that rain. It was like a hurricane. Oh, yeah, it was raining. It was I forgot about that. It was raining really bad. Got out of there. Okay. All right, I'm not mad at it. Well, uh, let me tell you what I did last night. And this is what you should have been doing. Um, I was watching Love is Blind mm. and seeing who made it to the altar. Now, look, guys. I know some people are going to say, I didn't see it yet. But guess what? If you look online, I already knew something was going to happen just from looking at social media. Right now, I see Wale's post is going viral. Um, 
He said, Clay of Love is Blind. I seen that coming a mile away. That show was Airbnb promo. That's diabolical behavior to do that girl like that. And so... Love is Bond. You haven't seen it yet. Do all. I have to, in order to watch it, do I got to go all the way back to the first season? No, you can start. This is season six. You can start with season six. It's really? always new couples okay. uh, being focused on. And I feel like it always starts off kind of slow because people are like just getting to know each other. So one of the most annoying couples on the show was Chelsea and Jimmy. Chelsea was like, they didn't even make it to the aisle. Jimmy basically told her, I can't be with you. And she would take no accountability for the things that she did wrong in the relationship. Mm. He was like, I love you to death. I want a relationship with you and I want it to work, but I don't want to go to the altar. And he said, there's been a lot of big issues that they've had. And I think you don't get married to try to solve these issues. You solve these issues and then get married. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't try to figure it out later. But I feel like one couple everybody was rooting for was Clay and A.D. The two of them from the beginning, you know, great uh, chemistry that they've had. They seem they're a black couple. Mm -hmm. Seem like they really liked each other. They look good together. Their families seem pretty amazing. But Clay had been saying from the beginning that he was hesitant to get married because of his own outlook on his father's infidelity. His father had been um, unfaithful to his mother, and that played a role. And when he got to the altar, he did not tell her. And I can respect Jimmy for telling Chelsea before they got to the altar, I don't want to do this. He waited until A.D. said, I do, to say this to her at the altar. Amber, do you take Clay? I do. Clay. A.D., I love you. I don't think it's responsible for me to say I do, but I want you to know that <laughs> I'm rocking with you. Uh, I just don't think it's responsible for me to say I do at this point when I still need work. I still need to get to the point where I'm 100% in and I'm not going to have you over here thinking <laughs> that it's not going to work. I'm going to put the work in for you. No. And we'll go through this together. No. Well, you waited till it was. You waited till she said I do, knowing that you wasn't gonna do this. Wow. All right. Now one another thing I want to talk about since we discussed how he always had been saying he was reluctant is his parents then after this happened had a conversation with each other and people love the way that Clay's mother kind of uh, summed up the situation. Here's what happened. He struggles with a marriage. And a lot of that stems from things that you have to explain and then apologize. I didn't necessarily have the best role models in my life. I know. We came from broken families. That doesn't mean that we have to pass on that brokenness to our kids. Absolutely. He wants to be in a long-term relationship. He wants that. Tell me somebody like you. You met me, but you wasn't good to me. Drop the mic. All right. But here's the question today. How do your parents' relationships affect how you are in a relationship? Because that's really what this is about. How do your parents' relationship affect the way that you treat your significant other? 800-292-5150. This is an introspective topic. How do you think that you are in relationships? And that is related to how your parents were with each other. 800-292-5150. Call us up. Let's talk about it. You vibing way up with Angela Yee. Come right back. More now. It's way up and Mayno is here. No, yeah. Mayno. And we're talking about how our parents' relationship affected ours. What about you? Oh, wait. And this came from Love is Blind, by the way. This is after Clay decided he did not want to marry AD at the altar. And then Clay's parents were having a conversation. And here's what they said. He struggles with a marriage. And a lot of that stems from things that you have to explain and then apologize. We came from broken families. That doesn't mean that we have to pass on that brokenness to our kids. Absolutely. He wants to be in a long-term relationship. You tell me somebody like you. You met me, but you wasn't good to me. Mm. All right. Now, I want to know, Mano, how has your parents' relationship affected how you are with women? I was pretty young. Um, I feel like uh, it was pretty toxic, maybe. Mm-hmm. I think my parents' relationship was, uh, was kind of toxic father was very aggressive mm-hmm. at times um and i could see some of that in myself okay you're toxic i'm not saying that i'm toxic i'm saying i can see some of those some of those same traits and so does that mean that you try to fight against it or i mean you, you identify it first mm-hmm. and that's the first thing and then once you identify it then you figure out ways that to work through it and, and, and to be better 
I think with my parents, my dad, he well, he's a yeller. So mm-hmm. he would yell at my mom a lot. And so if anybody yells at me, I can't be in a relationship with somebody that gets mm. aggressive or yells at me at all. It's like a red flag for me. Right. And I'm very clear on that, so though. you like triggered, like boom. Yeah, so like, she, oh, I'm not doing that. Like, oh. My mom said the first time she heard my dad yell was at their wedding. And she was like, oh, really? Yeah. And then it never stopped. It's kind of too late now. <laughs> <laughs> we getting married now. Whoops. All right. Well. It's not too late. If you're Clay, you'd be at the altar and say no. (laughs) Uh, But let's see what you guys think about this. How did your parents' relationship affect how you are in yours? 800-292-5150. James, how did your parents' relationship affect yours? Honestly, uh, just growing up, seeing my father's situation, it made me want to be a better person. I married my wife when she was 23, and I was 25, and we've been at it ever since. And I treat my wife with the utmost respect because I've seen the impact that my father had on his relationship, and I never wanted that. I wanted Ooh. opposite. So he hurt That's your he hurt your mom. Me. No, he didn't hurt my mom. He was never with my mom. He was uh-huh. just with multiple women okay. throughout our life. But I mean, hurtful as far as emotionally. He just oh wasn't yeah, there. oh yeah. Well, I, I've seen that all the time though yeah. with my father emotionally. But that never had an effect on me. I just know what not to do when I meet that woman because you, you might pass up on a good woman. Well, thank you for calling and sharing with us, and I'm glad that you went the opposite way. Yes, ma'am. Yee, no, no, y'all. Yee. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Alicia, how are you? Hi, I'm doing good. How are you? I'm good. Me and Mano want to know how did your parents' relationship affect how you treat yours? Well, my parents dealt with a lot of infidelity. Um, my father pretty much cheated on my mom, and that kind of broke up the whole relationship. I seen my mom be super depressed, and, you know, growing up, I just said, I'm never going to deal with that. But at the same time, I've dealt with other things and stayed in relationships because I felt like I wasn't being cheated on, so this can't be that bad, I can work through it. But I've dealt with things like raising a man and disrespect and stuff like that. That's interesting, so the only thing, you saw your mom depressed, and then you're like, the main thing is just don't cheat on me, I could deal with whatever else. So you was raising a man, you had to like change his diaper, what? (laughs) Basically. (laughs) I might as well have. We know how that is. All right, well thank you for calling and sharing with us. Of course, thanks. Hey, Shelly, what's up? Hi, good morning. Good. Angela, how are you? Good morning. Me and Mena are curious. How did your parents' relationship affect yours? Honestly speaking, my parents are not married. Mm-hmm. But my fiance's parents, they have been married for over 50 years. And just the foundation of marriage that I have witnessed personally, I have realized before I actually jumped the broom that therapy is mandatory. Okay. Too. And they never got married. So does that make you want to get married or not? I do because I do know that marriage can work. But I do know that, you know, I come from a Korean background and I noticed that communication is not something that we do effectively. Mm-hmm. So it, it doesn't um, negate the fact that I do want to get married. But I know that communication is necessary for, you know, all the years to come to make sure that we are communicating effectively so that we have a successful marriage. All right. Well, thank you for calling and sharing with us. Thank you. All right. Well, everybody, thanks for calling. And I know we're going to have a lot of messages for our last word today on this topic about how your parents' relationship affects your relationship today. And when we come back, we have your Yeetie. Speaking of relationships, let's talk about Rick Ross. It looks like he's moved on from the woman that he was dating. And she said they broke up two weeks ago. We'll discuss. It's way up. Yo, she about to blow the lid up off this pot. Let's get it. Oh, yeah. Angela's spilling that Yeetie. Come and get the tea. It's way up. I'm Angela Yee. Mano's in the New building. Mano. All right. Let's get into this Yee tea. Now, Rick Ross was on Instagram stories explaining his side of the story because Miami Dolphins wide receiver Tyree Kill had some issues about Rick Ross posting and, and documenting his house while it was on fire. All right. And here is what um, here's what Tyree Kill had to say about Rick Ross and how he don't F for him right now. Must be an electrical fire because the smoke is getting thicker and thicker as the fire trucks stand here. More and more helicopters. <laughs> all right, now that was Rick Ross reporting. Here's what Tyreek Hill had to say about his reporting. First of all, I just want to say, Rick Ross, bro, I can't vibe with you now, bro. I can't f- with you no more, bro. Like, you ain't even come over. You had the audacity to talk to a fireman instead of come tech. You got my number, bro. You get on Twitter, post me all over Twitter, like after what me and my family went through. You're supposed to be the neighbor, the neighborhood hero. <laughs> now, before we play Rick Ross's explanation, what do you think about this, Mano? He was reporting um, and... 
I, I see it from neighbor. both ends. I probably would have feel some kind of way if if I seen somebody like Navy out there reporting on my house. Right. While my house is burning down. Yeah, I mean, listen, that's an <laughs> awful time for somebody to go through yeah, something. So I would imagine exactly. anything is going to make you right. feel. I would feel some kind of way. Like, yo, you, you, my house is burning down. Are you on Instagram live? Well, um, Rick Russ had this to say in response. I Rick Hill, I wasn't picking on you, homie. More importantly, your beautiful mother and your family were straight. I didn't film none of them, homie. And let's not act like I'm the one that premiered the fire to the world. He said there were five helicopters circling your crib and my crib. We stayed right across the street. He also was like, I'm assuming you are all pro wealthy, great homeowners insurance. Go get new porcelain <laughs> floors, marble walls, pillars. It's nothing to pick on you about. So his explanation, what? <laughs> it's nah, funny, it's funny though. Yeah, his explanation pillars, is like, but you know, porcelain. I would hate you know, to have to deal with my house burning down and having my neighbor. Right, right, exactly. And especially if your neighbor's somebody famous. And then even though it was being right. reported on, a lot of people probably but saw it. Right, but it's different. From Rick Ross. Ross. Yeah, because he's putting it directly to us. Now, another thing recently with Rick Ross is that it looks like he is dating somebody new. Now, I don't know if it's dating or had somebody with him at the game and at Club Live. But, you know, there he was in a relationship with Christina Mackey. And previously, she had discussed how... Before that, he was with Pretty V, and she was like, "Listen, you've never seen him like this before. You've never seen him oh, posted up talking, talking. with somebody like this before." She was very excited. Yeah. Uh, never posted. seen him do this before, right? And then she now has posted on social media after right. it went viral of him being at the game with another woman. I've never experienced getting left. I'm just not docile. I don't feel played. The sales on MackieBody.com are thriving, and I'm grateful. The situation was beautiful, and I meant every word during our amazing six-month mm-hmm. run. Mm-hmm. If others are upset about my joy pride in the moment that's their stress to bear we had a clean break two weeks ago and i never pretended to be the last i embrace both positive and negative traction with love and no i won't be appearing on anyone's podcast Mm -mm. so her explanation for all of this is y'all just say no but we broke up uh two weeks ago and i still got a lot out of this relationship and i don't have no issues with him his baby mother said he just she just want to see over the headboard (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> yeah she's so always going what, in dude, she got a headboard <laughs> all right well that is your yt and when we come back we have under the radar under the radar is stories that may not necessarily be in the headlines they are flying under the radar and before we get into that don't forget that joe biden is having his uh his state address tonight, tonight. too by the way so let's make yeah. sure we're all i don't want to miss that, that. For real? Okay, yeah. good. All right, well, when we come back, Under the Radar, it's way up. Listen to news that relates to you. These stories are flying under the radar. It's way up. I'm Angela Yee. Mano's here. New Mano! Still here, baby. You ready for some Under the Radar? Let's get it. All right, Oscar Meyer is going to be rolling out vegan hot dogs and sausages. So now you can have your glizzies and know that they're vegetarian. Pulse. All right. It's a plant-based hot dog and sausage that they're doing this year. And it's with the help of a startup that was backed by Jeff Bezos, by the way. So now you can um, get that. You know, I'll be interested to see how this tastes because I have not had a hot dog in forever. Really? Because I also know, like, what's inside of those is... Right, it's not good. Super processed, definitely not good for you. I used to love turkey franks, and I haven't had them in so I long. So I wonder. I gotta look years. at this and uh, I see. haven't had a glizzy in years. How about you, uh, Navy? Oh, Navy's definitely. <laughs> Gliz- I've seen him scoff glizzy, down some glizzy. Glizzy fight. Yeah. Glizzy <laughs> goblin. <laughs> All right, now let's get into some more under the radar stories. And let's talk about a Chinese American family. Um, they were not able to buy a home back in 1939. They were in Coronado, California. They were unable to rent a house because of racially restrictive housing laws that favored white buyers and renters. That's when a black entrepreneurial couple who was in town, Emma and Gus Tom- uh, Thompson, stepped in and allowed the family to rent and eventually buy their property when nobody else would help them out. Mm. Now, thanks to the fact that the Thompsons helped them, they're donating $5 million to black college students using proceeds from the sale of the house because now they're selling that home. Janice right. Dong, who is now 86 years old, said it may enable some kids to go and flourish in college that might not have been able to otherwise. They also are planning to sell the family home they later purchased as well as an adjacent property. And they also work to have um, San Diego State University's Black Resource Center named after Emma and Gus, who were born in 
into slavery in Kentucky. Wow. So imagine how this black family who were entrepreneurs changed the trajectory of That's this right. Chinese American right. family's life Shame. by renting a home to them when nobody else would. And now they're paying it back by making sure that they're pouring back into the community. Wow, that's dope. All right, so I just thought that was a nice positive story. Yeah. And that is your Under the Radar. You know we got the Way It Mix for you guys at the top of the hour. Plus... It's a special day. Taylor Rooks and Joy Taylor are going to be joining us. Two amazing women who are sports journalists. They have a podcast that just came out yesterday called Too Personal. You can watch that whole first episode now, but they're going to talk about the whole process of getting this off the ground, why they decided to do it, and some backstory on their own personal lives. This podcast is not about sports. It's really about everything else besides sports, so you get to see and know about them on a different level. All right, that's coming up. It's way up. Talk like they Angela Yee, like they Angela Yee. Man, she's spilling it all. This is Yee T. Way up. It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee. Mano's in the building. New Mano. Good afternoon. New Mano. And let's get into uh, some Yee T. Now, unfortunately for Tyler, she's had to cancel his tour, Coachella and more. And that is all due to the fact that she's been privately been battling agonizing pain and so she's canceling all dates she wrote my tigers all of you know that this moment you have all helped me transform into a reality has been a lifelong dream I'm so grateful and humbled but she said as of right now I won't be able to proceed with the tour and that's because she's been silently suffering with an injury that has tragically worsened she said I've seen doctors and specialists with high hopes but the pain has only become more agonizing as has the severity of the situation so people's tickets will be automatically automatically refunded in North American territories and she said she is working on recovering. They don't say what the injury is. No, though. she said she's been privately battling this. Um, but her album does still plan to be released on March mm -hmm. 22nd. So here's uh, prayers for Tyla and hoping that she is able to beat this. All right, now let's discuss Club Shay Shay. Mm -hmm. And Steven Stout was on this latest episode of Club Shay Shay, and he had a lot of things that he wanted to get off his chest. Now, one thing he talked about was the origin of of the beef between 50 Cent and Ja Rule. This is a never ending beef, okay? I think 50 knew that Ja was not who he was portraying as an image. When we signed 50, there was something going on. I think he snatched Ja's chain or somebody snatched somebody's. It was one of these things and they had a fight in Atlanta. I didn't even understand it. I'm like, why do you keep having problems with this guy? It was like he was looking for problems with him, to be honest with you. Right. All right. And, you know, just recently, Ja Rule was talking about a fight he had with 50 and said that he beat him in a fight. But 50 has never responded to that. Now, right. the next thing that he talked about, and this went quite viral as well, is the issues between Jay-Z and Damon Dash. People wanted more, more becoming less beholden to him, but he was unaware of it. Then he would like, while he was building businesses, he would go off all around the world with cameras and girls and all kinds of crazy stuff. And then come back flipping out on everybody as if, you know. They were wrong. Yeah. Jay grew up. You know, Jay wanted more. Jay seen Dame's ceiling. I mean, I think that's really what it was. Mm. Yeah, and he gets into a lot more depth in there. But Damon Dash has responded, as I knew he would, See, by the way. I'm smacking you around. He said, this is the reason I had to smack the ish out of Steve Stout a couple of years ago, because he's always speaking on other men's business. Good thing I've evolved. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, it's not going to be pretty when everybody runs into each other. I was surprised that Steve Stout was... So, I mean, that's the temperature of the world right now. Everybody's exposing something. Everybody's, you know, coming out with, with stories about things that we either don't know or versions. Right, and, and Steve Stout also had some things to say about LeBron. Not negative things, mm -hmm. but he talked about LeBron turning down a $10 million check. When he was the young. whole story about LeBron and the ten million dollar check that he turned down, yes. I'm, it was my idea to give him the check. I was in the room give, to give him the check. A young black man, eighteen years old, walked away from ten million dollars going back to the projects. It meant so much. Not that the Reebok was wrong or the check was wrong, but the the freedom and confidence and belief in yourself to do that. This is a new generation of individuals. All right. Well, I'm sure this is going to be another Club Shay Shay interview that a lot of people are going to respond so to. So is it out yet? Yes. It's out right now. Yes, you can watch that watch interview it. now. So I know you're, you're definitely going to want to see this one. All right. And Sweetie recently sat down for a baby. This is Kiki Palmer with Kiki Palmer. And she talked about her secrets to success. Here's what she had to say. I'm like, OK, you're, you're dragging the persona of me. Mm. 
not me because if you know me you wouldn't be directing me so it's just like how i dealt with that it's just kind of like okay so reading you have a public image the public image of you is being dragged right now but don't take it personal because you're still like diamante and all these other like you know i have other existences Hmm. Yeah, so you know, part of I that is that. is making sure that you think about the brand at all right. times, even when you're uh, being dragged, and and you're in I the like, public like, eye. Yeah, that's a good way to look at things. Mm-hmm. Just the public image of me. It's not the real me. Right, and you gotta also think because I see people going at it all the time and responding, and mm-hmm. on reality shows, you have to think about your brand in the long run and who you want to align yourself with. Right. And am I gonna let this disrupt the check? Mm. Mayno. Mm. Not me. You done grew up too. Yeah. We love to see I, it. I ain't doing no responding. All right. Well, that is your Yeetie. And when we come back, we have Ask Ye. 800-292-5150 is a number. I'm with my award-winning advice giver who is award not dragging nobody. Winning. May know Ask Ye is next. Hey, everybody. Whether it's relationship or career advice, Angela's dropping facts. So you should know. You should know. This is Ask Ye. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee. And new Mano's in the new building. Mano. And it's time for Ask Yee. And you know, Mano is an award-winning advice giver. I am, though. I'm and we, and we have Samara on the line. So let's hear today's advice. What's your question, Samara? Hi, Yee. Hey. So my question is, I've been dating my boyfriend for five years. Mm-hmm. Two years and he proposed. I turned him down. I wasn't ready. I felt like it was too soon. But now, like, I feel like I'm ready. The only thing is, I don't know how to get him to propose to me again. Ooh. So I'm just like, what should I do? Should I propose? I how did you no. stay together after saying no? Because I know that's tough, too. Like, was he thinking this ain't going to work? Or was he chill? We were, there was no issues after. It was a little weird after. But we stayed together. Everything was fine. He still loved me and everything. But I just feel like now we're just kind of on autopilot. Mm-hmm. So we're ready for the next thing now. Like, you know, five years. So you ready? You are ready now to get married, right? Yeah. So you know what you got to do? Uh oh. No, seriously. Since he proposed first, now you have to propose to him. How about okay? You, let's you, be so fair. you would like you would like a woman to propose? No, to I'm you. not saying that. I'm saying listen, listen to what her dynamics were. He proposed. She turned him down. Mm-hmm. Now she's ready. So now she has to return the favor. Should I bring it up? Like, are we talking down on a knee? Like, yeah, do that. Do what he did. What did did he did he do all that? (laughs) Okay, then you got to return this. How about you talk to him and say, "Listen, Mm -mm. I know Mm -mm. you know three Mm -mm. years ago. Will you marry me, please, baby? That's how you do it. And I, because it's worth a conversation now, right? Before you even do that, he might have this dream of wanting to." Be the one to propose. Don't nah, take that. Nah, Some men don't, don't like that. No. You think he would like that? Like for you to propose? He got to shut him? down. That's why I'm nervous because I feel like guys don't like a woman to propose, but I'm tired of waiting though, so I'm desperate. You, you got to do you it. You should joke around with him and be like, what if I propose to you because you know I'm ready and see how he reacts. That's not a real proposal. It's not, then. but I'm saying yeah, see what his reaction nah, nah. is to know if you should do it or if you should let him you know. You know how that ready. man felt? When she said no, he had to pick his face up off the floor. But they stayed together three more years. Yeah, but he inside. I didn't say no. I said not right now. Oh, man. She said it was too early. And that's fair. He told his family. He told his friends. And then he had to go back to them and tell them that it didn't go through. (laughs) This is crazy. Nah, you need to propose to that man. But now he might have to go back and be like, oh, my God, she ruined everything. Like, she proposed to me. I never wanted that. It was always my dream to do X, Y, and Z. Just ask him. Just be like, what if I propose? to you no propose to him because you sent that man back to his mother with 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 a broken heart you know how many, <laughs> you know how many people he cried he cried to over that mm, mm, mm. ask him one knee baby <laughs> okay thank you guys she's like i don't know what i'm doing but at the, at the end of the day at least y'all still love each other and you're still together and now you're ready but i do feel like ask him first have a conversation the, sit down and then, go to and dinner you gonna ask him and then he gonna propose you don't got nah, he's traumatized you traumatized that man he won't even use that knee no more listen go, <laughs> go to dinner and be like i know i'm ready to get married now i know before i wasn't how would you like to do this? Would you Would you want me to ask him? It's not him? special, baby. Listen to me. I got you. Oh, if he turns me down, I'm going to call you guys back. And yeah, say, it okay. Didn't work. Go that for it. That wasn't my advice, so don't, don't, no, don't no. call us. Call me call back. Him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, well, thank you thank for calling, you. okay? Thank and good you, luck. Bye. All right.
All right, well, that was ASCII. We did not agree on that today. No, but I, I gave her the best advice, though, because you trying to get her I to hope play a woman safe, proposes though. to you, Mayno. Yeah. I can't wait. And I'm accept. All right, well, 800-292-5150, in case you couldn't get through. Leave a message. We'll give you advice. And when we come back, we got Taylor Rooks and Joy Taylor joining us. Their two personal podcasts dropped yesterday, and we're going to discuss everything about it. It's way up. You vibing way up with Angela Yee. Come right back. More now. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee, and I have two amazing guests, and I'm so excited that you guys are here. Joy Taylor and Taylor Rooks. Ooh, I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> the Taylors. The Taylors. Yes, <laughs> I'm so happy to be here with you. You know, I'm so happy for you. I love this studio. You're Thank killing you. it, so thanks for having us. Well, I'm so glad y'all are here, and I am so happy that you both have a podcast, and it's going to be every Wednesday. And when I first heard about why you guys are doing it, I was like, yes, thank you, Jesus. Okay. <laughs> talk about the name of the podcast it's called two the number two personal and i was the first thing i thought when you guys collaborated was it's going to have the, the name taylor in there somewhere but you guys went through a process to come up with a name so can you talk about that you know we are known as taylor rooks and joy taylor like in this sports space so mm -hmm. we're entering into like a really new exciting and different space so people are going to know us there as something else what is that transition going to be like both of you kind of keep your personal lives very personal so this is different too so what's going to be the balance for you guys because now people are going to know more about you personally like we are deciding that we want to show people who we are we want to talk about things and be very unfiltered and i think for me that's probably a bit more of a difference than what joy has done because joy has done radio she mm -hmm. has talked about these things me, I have made a living off of asking other people personal questions. Um, but I like that now it's just I want to show everything about myself. And it's definitely a challenge because you're right. We are two very private people. Very. <laughs> Emphasis on very. Like we can Google some things yeah. and see, but we don't know. Uh, you guys hey, and half of that ain't ever true. Yeah. So, the yeah. Streets, we have a joke. The streets have a, they've never got a dub on me. Like, yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Literally, I'm very clear. They have never <laughs> caught me doing nothing that they say. They ever, whatever you've heard from the streets, I can promise it's you it me. is wrong. Right now, I'm talking to Joy Taylor and Taylor Rooks. Their podcast, Too Personal, is out right now. I want to ask both of you, is it hard to date because you guys are around men all the time? Does that make somebody feel insecure in your experience? I am very loved and in love, but... I, luckily, he has literally no insecurities. And you're not going to say his name on the no, podcast. No, I am not. Everybody who is listening just to hear his name. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, and you don't know him, so it doesn't matter yeah. if you're listening. Um, but no, he is truly like the most secure, most supportive, most encouraging, grandest man uh, that you will ever meet. And I think that through the relationships I've been in, because I, I've, you know, thought I've been in love many times. I've been in relationships many times. And the big issue in a lot of those things was some level of insecurity. But a lot of times, I don't think that people know that they're insecure. I'm at a point in my life where things are very non-negotiable for me. I went through <laughs> a very serious stretch of therapy okay. where I knew that the main thing that I was going to focus on healing was my complete inability to enforce boundaries. And now that I have very, very strong boundaries, it's so easy to say no to things because I know that this doesn't serve me and it's not about hurting someone or not valuing someone. I just truly believe that there are so many chapters of your life and people mm -hmm. come in and out of your life for different reasons. And some people are forever and some people are extremely temporary. And I don't have a sense of ownership over people that I feel like I had when I was younger, when I was a bit more insecure myself. So I truly just do not allow that kind of energy around me. I would never be with a man that's insecure about what I do, about who I am, about how I present myself. It's just, it would never get to that point. It's completely and agree. You've been engaged before, right? I've been married and married engaged. Married and engaged, yes. okay. And then, have you ever been engaged? Uh, I have been engaged, yeah. yes. I have been engaged. I didn't know that. I okay. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, <laughs> yes, engagement is certainly a thing I've experienced. Um, but... I think that what we both feel like is that love and relationships are not rooted in ownership. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, what role do I have in not necessarily like controlling a person's life, but at least dictating some elements of it? And I think at least for me, what I have learned is like love feels more like freedom and it feels like I am letting you be who you are and I am accepting who you are and I am letting you move through life in the ways that feel good to you. And that's also what I want love to feel like to me. But we only know that through lots of lots of <laughs> lots of trial and error. Yeah. <laughs> 
Joy Taylor and Taylor Rooks are with me. They are acclaimed sports journalists. We have more with them when they come back. Talking about their new podcast, Too Personal. It's Way Up. You vibing Way Up with Angela Yee. Come right back. More now. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee. And Joy Taylor is here. Taylor Rooks is here. The two of them are amazing sports journalists. But they also want to start talking about their personal life. They have a brand new podcast called Too Personal that launched yesterday. And Taylor, I remember when you first moved to New York. Yeah. And we met. And just to see where you are now, I think, has been absolutely inspiring and amazing oh, every time I you, see you do an interview that goes viral I'm like look at my girl Taylor. yeah I appreciate you, you no, know? And honestly I mean this thank you so much for embracing me when I first moved to New York because moving to New York was very scary for me I moved here when I was like 24 I feel like I you're more New York than me now yeah she, maybe she outside, maybe I'm, like, I, I'm in the house all the time you're at zero bond yeah. <laughs> she be in the mix <laughs> But I mean it. Thank you so much. And I, I'm so proud of you. Like with this show, I watch all the time. I literally just finished watching the La La episode. So uh-huh. I just love seeing how you have evolved and thrived and continue to just, you know, push culture forward. Thank you. And I want to ask you guys when you. Uh, OK, so let me ask you first, Joy. If you're critical of an athlete or somebody and you run into them, have you ever had an instance where they really had like an issue with anything? No, I honestly haven't. OK, not that I think that somebody hasn't received what I've said well (laughs) well it comes naturally to me because of the experiences that I've had around with my brother and around you know other professional athletes and the fact that I do view these humans as human beings right I try to talk about when I am critical of someone in a way that is based in facts is based in statistics is based in research is based in things that if I did run into them I could say well <laughs> yeah this <laughs> back it did happen yeah. and yeah. this is the case and you did lose this game with the football in your hands <laughs> you know like th- these things are these things do exist and that's right. where I draw my opinion from but I also am very conscious of not allowing my ego or emotion or opinion, which can be very strong, to overwhelm what it is I'm saying. I'm not calling someone a name. I'm not trying my very hardest not to make it a personal attack. Yeah. I don't feel it. Who you are as a person should not have anything to do, for the most part, 99% of the time, with whatever it is we're talking about on the show. I, I know things. I drink and I know things. Okay. I know lots of things, but I am not a reporter. But secret keeper. Secret keeper, I am. I'm not a reporter. So I'm not going to hear something and then expose it and, and use that to, right. you know, paint how I feel about a, an athlete. So I am very conscious of. I'm not going to make this disrespectful to someone as a person. I'm talking about what you do. The job I'm talking that about you the sport. Perform that particular. Yeah. Game. And, and we all know this. You have to separate art from artists mm-hmm. almost all the time in our businesses. It's just not a privilege mm-hmm. to, to say we're only talking about people that always do the right thing. Well, listen, I know y'all are on the press run, but I do appreciate <laughs> you guys so much. I'm really excited for the podcast. And I know there's so much that we don't know that we're going to learn. It's not an easy business that both of you guys are in, but it's so amazing to be able to have found somebody that you guys can really lean on each other when you need to and be secret keepers. No, for sure. <laughs> it's the best. The secrets are important. We yeah. are going to tell some secrets, but yeah, we will tell it, secrets. It might, it might not be names <laughs> and dates. Oh, I cannot wait. Okay. But we'll tell some secrets. <laughs> but yeah. no, I think for everybody who also is trying to, to be in this space, you know, it feels like it's going to have a lot of integrity, mm-hmm. which I like, because like you said, everybody is doing this and everybody doesn't have to have the microphone but it is nice to see people do responsible podcasts and so I'm looking forward to it so much and I appreciate y'all for coming through it is women's month so I feel like it's intentional that y'all launched this month we are very yeah, intentional we people. are intentional <laughs> but no it is. Played a role. it is yeah <laughs> okay yeah we're very excited about it and also this is really not about sports like, yeah. this show yeah. is not about sports we obviously have those outlets that we pour into fully when it comes to sports but this is the conversations that we have at dinner that we have mm-hmm. over martinis that we have over maybe some other substances and <laughs> we you know we really get into it you know we we have these conversations yep. 
feels and like a therapy session at yes, times yeah. too, I'm sure. And mm-hmm. that's what Girlfriend Talk really is. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, guys. You. Honestly, I appreciate it. And we'll be tuning in March 6th. The first episode comes out and then every Wednesday. Yes, yes. that's Thank correct. You so much for Thank you, us. Angela. You're the best. We Thank appreciate you. Thank you, ladies. <laughs> you can watch the full interview on my YouTube channel, Wait Up With Ye. And when we come back, of course, you guys have the last word. Pick up the phone. Tap in. Tap in to get your voice heard. What the word is. Here's the last word on Way Up with Angela Yee. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee. And my guy, New Mano's in the building. Yeah. Why are you smiling like no, that? Because it's like I'm trying to get you to be a better friend to me. Well, make sure you check like, out his real. throwback Thursday he posted. Look at young <laughs> Mano. Old Mano. No, young no, Mano. Young Mano. Okay. Yeah, that's the old one. I posted a throwback Thursday too yeah. after you posted yours. Angelina. Me and my big brother. But again, thank you to everybody for joining us today. Thanks to Joy Taylor and Taylor Rooks. Thank you to everybody who who watches Love is Blind and called in. We had a whole discussion about how our parents' relationships affects our own relationships. Mm-hmm. It's a nice reflection to see I mean, what triggers us. Sometimes the cycle can uh, be just that, cycle. You know, if it's a bad cycle, we should try to break that and be more aware and conscious of it. And of course, you guys get to have the last word. My parents uh, uh, were divorced when I was a teenager, but therapy allowed me to really realize how that affected my ability to communicate with my wife. But I had years of therapy to really address it, to learn how to love my wife and bury my thoughts and and expectations of what a marriage is supposed to be and actually live and reimagine what a marriage is supposed to be with my wife. Hey, my name is Camille. I just wanted to shine a light on my parents. I am physically disabled, but I'm mentally able. So I understand that a lot of times the parents of the disabled person do not get credit for the work that they put in. And my parents have done more than enough for me and I would have nothing without them. So they're really great and I just wanted to shine a light on the parents of disabled people. Going way up up, up. with Angela Yee.